Okay, this structure is the scrotum. The function of the scrotum, it contains muscles that adjust the temperature of the testes. So this white area is actually the testes. Inside is where sperm is produced. So by the muscles in the scrotum contracting, when temperatures are cold, it gets the testes closer to the body, thus the sperm are not destroyed or become inviable. If it's too warm, then the muscles can relax and the testes would then be located farther away from the body and that would also cool down the temperature of the testes. So it's all to maintain the appropriate, the appropriate temperature for testy, per, testy production, or sorry, sperm production in the testes. So that's the function of this, produce sperm. This is the epididymis. Its function is to store and mature sperm, but not to produce it. It's store and mature. This is the ductus deferens, which you can also call vas deferens. It means the same thing, your pick. However, if there's a marker that includes this entire area, includes the blood vessels, it also has nerves, for example, this entire thing is known as the spermatic cord. The spermatic cord. Now, the spermatic cord continues up and enters the body. The area where it enters the body, this area, you can see the skeletal muscle, this is called the inguinal canal. Inguinal canal. So only in males, females do not have this. So this causes, can cause a weakening in this area, which means this is why males are more likely to have an inguinal hernia than females. Continuing. The vas deferens then comes around here, and it will get secretions from the seminal vesicles. Seminal vesicle function, produce an alkaline fluid that will neutralize, help to neutralize the acidity within the urethra. Remember that in males, the urethra will perform both urinary and reproductive functions. Since urine is acidic, that means that all of these glands, we'll talk about seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, bulbourethral gland, they all secrete alkaline substances to neutralize any leftover urine, very acidic urine that's in the urethra, thus protecting and maintaining the viability of sperm. This entire area is the pelvic diaphragm. Pelvic diaphragm is all of the skeletal muscle that is on the bottom of the abdominal cavity. The specific region right here is called the urogenital diaphragm. That is simply, as the name implies, where the urinary system and genitals would be located, just from here to here, that skeletal muscle. Next, let's actually um, look inside. Here, the entire thing is, is, or this area is the testes. Inside are the seminiferous tubules that we could not see on the outside. Seminiferous tubules. And again, that's where sperm production occurs. Epididymis here, store and mature sperm. Now, this structure, this area on the outside is called the prepus. The prepus is, called, is also the foreskin, though you should use the scientific term prepus on the practical. Okay, most models would not, will not have that. Even this with the top, it's removed from this area. So prepus, um, if present here, would actually cover this section, which is called the glans penis, which is right here. It's not present here, but it is on the base. So you can see how it's coming down, covering this um, the glands portion. Now, this is the bladder. Inside, there's a band of smooth muscle here that's known as the 
that would cur curl around here known as the internal urethral sphincter. Again, you can't see it, but it's located in this area, wraps around this canal. This canal is the urethra. However, in the male, we call it several different specific terms depending upon where exactly we find it. And I'll go through those uh, as we get there. First of all, this was the prostate gland. Prostate. I'm going to remove this. You can see what it looks like inside. Prostate gland. Again, the prostate gland produces an alkaline fluid. The portion of the urethra that continues through here is known as the prostatic urethra. Prostatic urethra because it's in the prostate. Now, this section over here, this little extension, that is the ejaculatory duct. So remember, our vas deferens, we're carrying sperm, carry sperm, and they come in here. That's where it continues in. So sperm will enter the rest of the urethra at the ejaculatory, ejaculatory duct right here. This area specifically that skeletal muscle is the urogenital diaphragm. You also have an external urethral sphincter that's located here, muscle band. Now the canal when we get down here is called the spongy urethra. The reason for this is the tissue on both sides which is this red tissue. All of this red tissue is called the corpus spongiosum and I'll tell you the function in a moment the purple is the corpora cavernosa now both of these tissues engorge with blood to cause erection that is their function now let's take a quick glance at this other model just to be sure that you can also identify everything because you'll have both models on the exam. So scrotum, testes, epididymis. Uh, would have been the spermatic cord entering the inguinal canal. This would be the seminal vesicle, prostate gland. Now, on the other model, you could not see what was called the ampulla. That's why I'm showing you this model specifically. This section here is the ampulla. That was part of the vas deferens coming in, coming around. Right here, it's an enlarged area of the vas deferens. And then the ampulla portion meets with this portion in the prostate gland, which is called the ejaculatory duct. And then we're back to the prosthetic urethra.